Hey guys and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be covering how to make stylized weapons for games. Uh, we'll be covering how to make the rifle from start to finish. Um, and the high poly, and then baking, and then texturing inside Substance Painter. So, this is our side reference. We're gonna be importing that into 3ds max so what we need to do first is I'm gonna right click and hit properties go to details and you wanna you wanna read the values of the height and width then you wanna open 3ds max hit the square or the plane primitive and switch the creation method to square and then just drag it out like this and I usually just remove the height and uh, the length and width segments. So Alt and W will zoom in into the windows while middle clicking will select the windows. You can see the golden frame around every window when you middle click it. So now we'll just move it back like this. and. I want to look at the values and I just want to enter them. So 737 and 1920. And at the moment it's really huge compared to our little grid here. So what I just do is I will press R or you can press this button here and you can just scale it down easily. Okay. Just move it back a bit. And now you can just drag the image onto that plane. And I, I think if you're running a newer version of 3ds Max, so I'm using 3ds Max 2017, you can click right click object properties. I'm sorry, if you are running a newer version, you might not have to do that. But in my version, you still need to do that. So I need to untick show frozen in gray. And now if I right click and hit free selection, anything I do will not affect the plane. So I will get into my left viewport again and I will press F3 to enable default shading. And I will press G to get rid of the grid. And now we have a side view we can work with. And I want to make sure I will open this reference because this is the main reference I'm going to be using. Um, the burst rifle is not that complicated, so I think this is the only reference I will need. And okay, so we will start by doing the main cylinder here. So into 3ds Max, you want to go to that creation tab over here, and you want to hit cylinder and you want to just put this uh, sides to 12 and no height segment and then you want to try to just drag it out then you want to press or click this here which is angle snap you want to press E or you can click here and then just rotate it by 90 degrees and what I will do now is I will just right click it and add it to a poly and I will just move it out to about here and I can press alt and x now to look through the object and I can also press f4 to see the wireframe but I, in my opinion the ghost mode is still not very um, transparent so we'll just go but uh, ahead by pressing M to open the materials editor and I will just put the opacity down to zero and now if I hit alt X again as you can see it's completely transparent but we have our Y frames so under the graphite modeling tools I will just hit swift loop and make some cuts here 
and now we'll just select these vertices and I'm just gonna move them up just like that okay uh, I might want to tweak this here as well to keep the distribution even Okay, and I want to look at the reference again because we have a nice top-down perspective as well and I see that this here is also scaled so we'll go back into max and just select it and scale it on the x-axis okay so we have the um, main cylinder ready and what I will do now is I will just look at the reference again just to make sure everything is fine okay and I will just continue by creating this piece right here it's pretty simple as well so what I will do is I will just leave it like that for now I will cl click the plane primitive again, drag it out, right click editable poly, and then just delete. And under the polygon mode, I will hit create. And what this allows me to do is I can just easily create polygons by making some vertices first. Okay. Um, sometimes if you create uh, with this method you will have like a black face which means that your um, faces are flipped so you, the way you can flip, fi fix it is uh, you can just hit flip over here and I want to whenever I create a new face I want to make sure I you know tweak some areas just to make the distribution a bit more even okay that looks good uh, I'm just gonna move it like this a bit I'm going to use the cut tool and just uh, make some horizontal cuts throughout the surface. And what I did here is I actually just selected these two vertices and you can actually align them. So for instance, if I select these two vertices and hit the line by the y-axis, it will, you know, make it straight, but I don't want it on that uh, edge. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just look at my reference and figure out where to place it. So I think about here and I'm going to orientate myself with a little black line running across the canvas. I'm going to hit symmetry which you can find in the modifier list by just pressing SY symmetry and I noticed that the piece I have is way too thick so what I will do is I will hit show end result go to the front viewport and just move it in a bit until it slightly matches up with our reference 
I think that looks good enough. Just tweaking here, some stuff here. Okay, um, that's fine. No, I think. So I'll just leave it the way it is. I'm gonna press F3 again, and we're gonna do this magazine part now. So I will just use the same workflow. I will just create another plane for uh, visibility reasons. I will just give these two guys a transparent material. I will hit create. And I'm just gonna try to cut the shape out. Now you notice I start really simple, which is fine. I'm just straightening up the edges. Now I can use Swift Loop. Okay. <coughs> I'm gonna be moving this out. I'm gonna look at reference because that's very important. And I'm gonna give the other guys the standard gray material again. Okay. I think that looks really faithful to the to the reference. So I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna hit edit poly. And this allows you us to create another edit poly modifier on top. So I'm just gonna cap it off for now. Gray material. Next piece is this block here. It's going to be really fast. For this, I will just keep the plane primitive. I'm gonna have to move it up. Okay, so with this out of the way, we're going to move on to the grip. I'll look at how the grip is in the concept. So it's basically just a block. 
So I will just um, apply transparent material here so I can see through. I'm just gonna use the create function again and as you see the face turned out to be black but if we hit flip it will turn normal Okay, I'm gonna look how the grip is actually in the concept. So it's a chamfer here and then the chamfer around the corners it seems. So we can easily replicate it. Let me show you how. So first of all you gotta select all the edges and just like multiply edges you can just hold control and as you can see there's gonna be a plus next to your mouse or your cursor or you can hit alt which will deselect so I'm just gonna hit plus or control in this case and I'm gonna assign a chamfer value this looks fine maybe just yeah, this is fine. Okay, maybe just slightly bigger. Okay, and then we're gonna select, hit the ring button, and then loop, then hit chamfer again. Now I'm going to go to the left viewport, I'm just going to tweak some stuff to make sure the reference, it looks like the reference. So I want to exaggerate these lines quite a bit. I'm going to use symmetry to make the other side. Okay, and I'm going to reassign a gray material to the pieces. And if you, as you can see, the chamfer is right where this piece meets. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the front viewport and just move it in like that. And that should hopefully look good. Okay, um, we're gonna move ahead with this piece here. Uh, really simple, you can recreate it with the create method again.
All right. Now the trigger should be really easy. Okay, that's it for the trigger. Symmetry <clears throat> and making block out is mostly the same process over and over again. It's not very exciting, I know. Okay, now we have actually our main body finished and it looks really good so far so let's continue by doing this piece here yeah it's really simple just wondering what this little piece is because it doesn't seem to be represented in the concept here yeah, as you can see, it's not represented in this concept, so we'll just ignore this. Okay, so let's move on to the stock. So here, I think I'm going to maybe scale it out like this. Not very skeleton on all axes. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the plane primitive. I'm just going to Create the shape here. <clears throat> I'm just going to have to move it down a bit.
add a cylinder. I'm just gonna make this one smaller a bit. Okay. Uh, next up, I'm gonna use blind. So just switch the tab and hit line. <clears throat> Make sure it's on the very edge. And um, in order to preview the spline in the viewport, you have to click Enable Viewport. I have the side straight. You can change it to 12, you can, you know, have more interpretation, but I want to delete this here by hitting the delete key. So now I have more control. Over everything. And now I can turn these pointy corners into smooth. Just by just hitting the fill up button. Here as well. And important, you can the interpolation, you can turn it down so you have less geometry to work with. And I'm actually gonna stick with that. Because I am not a fan of having too much geometry in the blockout stage. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it like that. But um, let's see. Maybe make it a little bit thinner. Um, that looks good. I'm gonna hit edit polyno and I'm gonna just move this guy here towards the other edge and I'm gonna make sure it's really almost at the end on both right here so make sure it's really at the end like that I think we have a shading issue here and it's because there's a hidden vert Let's just select these two and hit smooth 30. Okay, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Let's just um, leave it like that, it looks good. I'm just gonna delete these guys. And this guy here. Hit the delete key. And then just hit smooth. Okay and create material like always and it's not 100% following the shape but it doesn't have to as long as it looks close enough it's fine in my opinion especially if it's stylized 
okay the shape now let's take a good look at it okay Flip. Press F4, double click the edge and just move it out. Symmetry. <clears throat> so I'm just going to move it in bit more and now I can hit shell I hit shell in the inside and again, you can find shell in the modifier list by typing shell in it. It's kind of buggy at some certain areas. Mm. Oh, I noticed something different here. Okay, that's strange. So the concept is hard like that, and I actually like it more. So let's just follow the concept, the other one. So really quickly, just 
this guy needs to be here. I'm going to ex exaggerate this area a bit. <clears throat> okay, now I like it a lot more. Uh, let's try shell now. And we still have this uh, annoying issue here, but we can fix this. But now it looks much like the reference, but the hole or the cut we can still do later, so it's not a huge issue. Just double checking, making this maybe a bit more thick. Yeah, that's fine. Now on top I will hit edit poly or edit yeah the edit poly modifier. And here I'm just gonna you know try to align these vertices again. Zoom in and select the clipping one. Go to constraints and hit edge. Just move it up. Hopefully that should. Or actually Hit target weld and just target weld this guy to here. And now we can delete this here. And now we have an gun here. First, I'm going to hit this. I will just delete half of it so I can do clean up on one side and then just mirror it later on and I think that's going to be a way better way to approach this right now. So I'll just connect what's, what I see or what is the most obvious stuff. Really quickly. Hide unselected. Just like this here, move it up. This one needs to be moved down. Okay, looks good. And the final one would be just to make a cut like this. 
and I'm not sure why it why it thinks this is a four-sided area. Just gonna do one more manual cut and yeah normally it should stop right here because this swift loop tool only works on you know four sided areas but for some odd reason there seems to be an issue so i'm just going to collapse everything hit editable mesh and editable poly again and it's still not fixed so just weld everything Okay, never mind. I'm just gonna do it manually then. Okay, we are done with this piece. Let's try to do some minor tweaks. Yep, we are pretty much done. No unhide all, and just use symmetry. Okay, that looks good. Gonna line to some stuff here so it's way cleaner. Okay, clean enough. So next up is the magazine.
Or actually, let's do this piece first. Okay, and next step would be to take a box just rotate it a bit increase the height And here, uh, I'm going to hit Editable Poly. I'm going to change for it. seems like I need to move and scale. I'm going to go to Compound Objects, Pro-Boolean, and Subtraction. What I need to do now is I'm going to get Editable Poly back, tweak some stuff here. Just target well stuff. Like so and now we can just move move it up. Just like that.
So as you can see, I what I just did is I just um, try to model out the shape, and then I use Boolean, which is basically a fast way of cutting in holds and other type of detail with uh, different objects. And now I'm just connecting the verts up and cleaning up some of the geometry. And this looks pretty nice now. Now we have a nice little site which looks close to the ref reference. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, once we have the block out, the high place really fast. And then we're going to take it in ZBrush. But for now, let's just focus on finishing one thing. Um, but before I do it, I just want to clean up some of the edges here. I just think it's a good practice to do, to do that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually select this, hit make planar without the constraints on here as well. Just make sure that these faces are planar. Here as well. Okay, with that out of the way. With that out of, out of the way, we can maybe do, let me think, can do this piece here, it's really fast as well. So let's take a cylinder here. Add it to a poly. Cylinder seems to be hidden right here. It seems to be tilted as well. And just sit extrude. Here, just hit make planar so the bottom face is actually straight and then just you know turn it you may want to make it bigger Okay, and uh, now we need to select this and this, and this is just um, inset, delete, um, maybe make the inset smaller. Okay, and delete, hit bridge, and that's it. Let's 
seems that we need to move this down. Now it looks fine. <clears throat> yeah, this looks good now. And I'm just gonna make this bigger really, just a slight slightly bit. So I can you know, move this thing out a bit. Okay, now this piece is done. Let's move on to the magazine. So the magazine would probably be around here. And I'm just gonna literally keep the magazine as a block because I want to work more um, in more detailed forms later on. I think now it's not the correct time for it. So I'm just gonna indicate it with this here. Yeah, that looks okay. Let's do the barrel. Okay, just move it, or there's an easier way. Just move it like this, and now hit quick slice, and just slice across. Hit only select this border, and hit delete. And as you can see, we have a nice barrel here. And just gonna scale it in. Move it into out here. And here, I'm just gonna close it in by hitting cap right here. Because uh, I don't feel like making it running, making it running all the way through. Standard material. Let's continue by doing the wood piece. I'm kind of dying to do that. 
because it's the most interesting piece to me. So just doing it with the create method again. Okay. Give it a standard material. Okay. Do some cuts here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything. Just move it towards the middle. I'm going to hide unselected really here so you can just see this piece. And the top one as well. So if I hit shift and click, I will actually, you know, it will actually help me retain the curvature or actually, yeah, it will help me retain the curvature. So let me show you again. I will just do a cut in the middle, drag it out like this diagonally. Now if I go to swift loop and hit shift and then click. Swift loop will actually try to retain the curvature of my object. You will need to tweak a lot, admittedly, but it's still really helpful. So see how quickly we've created the wood stop, uh, wood grip. Not on height hole. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at the top. Try to match it with the barrel here so it's perfectly in the middle. And maybe just scale it out a bit. That looks good. Now I'm going to do a really quick method or um, really quick thing to cap all the faces. So 
I'm just gonna bridge, you know, this right here and this here, and then I'm just gonna hit cap, cap it all off. It seems smaller right here. So I'm gonna take everything here and just move it up like this. I think that looks good. Okay, we have this piece out of the way. Now we need the cylinder here. We need to do the gas block here. And then we're done with our block out. So, let me think. Let's actually do a cyl this cylinder first. Inset. And I'm going to actually use this piece here to do the cylinder as well. Detach this piece. And now just Move it up here. Hit bevel by local normal.
Okay. I think it looks good. I'm just gonna scale this here like that just a bit. And now I think everything looks really good. Turn off auto key and assign a gray material to that piece here. And smooth 30 here. Here as well. Okay, and finally, just this piece here and this cylinder block. And the rest is gonna come in the part two video. Okay, so cylinder block here. I think 12 sides, 12 sides are enough here. So cylinder, drag it out. To here. And I'm going to just use this here as a different piece. So I'm going to be doing the gas block, I guess. I'm gonna use Turbo Smooth once and then just hit edit poly on top. And that is just because so so I have more geometry to work with.
Okay, now the final touch here. Just gonna drag a box out. And the same um, way again, so just boolean it out. And you notice we now lost, oops, we now lost a lot of geometry for some reason. And the way to prevent that is to go down here and hit no edge removal, and then start doing it again. And as you can see, it's really clean now. And I'm just gonna hit edit poly again. I want to tweak some more of the shape because I want to exaggerate this piece here. And now, compound object or objects and hit subtraction. Okay, and I'll so now what I do is I'm gonna try to get rid of the stray verts that are in the middle here as you can see and I'm just gonna select all the object and hit at least on my keyboard it's shift and space and as you can see remove them and this is a plugin I, that is not native to 3ds Max, but it's free. I will link the um, plugin in the project files. So to install it, you just basically drag and drop the file into the viewport. Then you're gonna go to customize user interface, main UI, there we go, Shiva tools, vertex cleaner, and just assign a hotkey here and then click on assign and this is how you use Shiva tools it's really uh, it's really an awesome tool especially if you work a lot with booleans and here I'm just target welding some of the edges as you can see now just connect or you can use the cut tool And the object is now really clean to work with. We just need to add one more loop here and here. Connect it like that. And now if we hit turbo smooth, everything should smooth quite nice. Actually, select everything and hit weld, and now it's smooth nicely. Of course, we just need to add some more stuff because right now it's not going to smooth very nice, but that is going to be explained in the high poly modeling tutorial or section. 
Okay, what's left is a nib that is right here. I'm just going to save it real quick. And what I did is really risky. I did not save any anything when I was doing that. So I recommend saving uh, as much as you can when you're done with uh, tedious pieces. Just going to move this up. And again, this is really not, I think, for first person, more like for third person shooters or something. So yeah, what I just like to do is when I finished my block outs, I'm just going to assign a, make a new material black, a bit glossy here, and then just assign it to everything. I'll just take a look. I'm going to go to high quality go to standard lights just place a light here and a light right here this light a warm color maybe and this light is going to be a cold color Yep, and that's pretty much the block out. In the next video, we're going to cover the details and uh, high poly, hopefully. So I see you in the next video.